All right, so we're going to finish up installing the thimble on the inside. Uh, in order to get that on there right, we're going to put a level on there and we're going to push it up against the wall. And we're just going to screw it in. I guess you could use wall anchors. Um, I'm just going to put in some drywall screws because I'm in my garage and if it comes loose, I could always put wall anchors in. So just lightly put those in. I don't want to uh, like basically strip out the drywall. And I did cut my hole for the oak um, slightly oversized and that way I could adjust this thing and level it properly. So the hole on the metal is tight, but uh, when I drilled through the plywood in that, I left it oversized almost a half inch. You may have noticed. Alright, so that looks pretty good. And these seem to be biting pretty well. This is that fire rated drywall, so it is 5 eighths of an inch thick. Alright, so that should secure that. And now we have to connect our pipes and use our RTV sealant on the inside. Alright guys, we're looking at the back of the stove. Basically what we're going to do is uh, we're going to put some RTV sealant uh, right around here. Uh, it says to do that in the uh, owner's mallet manual of this Jamestown stove. It's a Jamestown J1000. So we'll run that right around here just to get a good seal. That way if there's any smoke leaking out of there it won't go like inside the stove so that you wouldn't see it. And uh, I believe it says to do the same thing with our uh, Oak, which is our air intake, our outside air intake kit. So, whatever, spread this stuff around. This is a little bit messy. But, you get on there, do the best you can. Next step, we're going to put on our appliance adapter. It's going to go right here. Uh, this is a tapered pipe, so I don't want to put too much sealing on here because it already seals really tight in case I ever need to get it off. So we'll slip this on here and it has an arrow which tells which way it should flow. Alright, we'll spin that a little bit just to seal it up nice. That looks good. Next thing that we're going to attach is going to be the uh, clean out T. So we'll put a little RTV sealant on here. Take the time, spread it around. You can use RTV sealant or foil tape, it said. I think the sealant. Uh, seals a little better so that's what I'm using. We'll slip that in and turn it. That's going to seal nice and I'm just going to get a rag and clean that up a little bit. Alright so far so good so we're just going to work our way up a little bit here Sealing off each joint the same way. There we go. And once again, you can see the flow sticker. Tells you which way the smoke's going to flow. There's a little arrow. So we'll put that on there. 
and give her a turn. There we go, nice and tight. And uh, we're gonna move up to the next one. We're actually doing three pipes, vertical rise. And we're using RTV sealant. And that's made for high heat, for things like ovens and chimney flues and things like that with smoke. It's different than than fire caulk that a builder would use in a house. All right, now we are uh, ready to attach our elbow. So we'll do that. I probably should have done the outside last because it's probably going to get twisted in the process here but um, I was kind of fighting daylight it's already pretty dark out there so I might have to go out and touch that up after I get everything cranked together because I think I might have to make this last connection uh, from outside so we're all connected up to here. I'm going to take a minute and I'm going to clean up this pipe a little bit with the rag. All right, here goes. One thing, you got to let this sealant set up for 24 hours. So getting it all done today so I can run this thing tomorrow. Curious how long it's going to take to heat up my garage. The stove's uh, 38,000 BTUs. Alright, so I'm going to back this stuff into place. And we're going to have to definitely adjust the uh, outside pipe because, as you can see, it's getting twisted. So we'll hook this on here and hopefully tighten it up. There we go. And that looks like a nice seal. I'm going to take the rag and clean that up. And, uh, Get my corner looking good, and we're, we're going to back the stove up. Get everything the way we want it. We're making sure that we stay three inches away from the wall. We have plenty of room. I have like eight inches. So I'm going to use a rag and touch that up. So it looks like we got it all hooked up. I'm going to go outside quick for it's completely dark out, and... Uh, I'm just going to touch up because I'm sure that caulk out there got twisted. So um, what I would recommend is start at the stove and work your way outside and then uh, finish up outside. Just putting a little clear silicone on the inside edge of the oak. This will help, you know, just keep the oak in place. So it doesn't have a tendency to want to slide forward or back. That's good. So uh, I'm going to wait a little bit before I hook up the oak. I'm going to let that silicone set up. Uh, I didn't buy an oak kit. I got this, uh, it's called Walker Flex Pipe. And this is an uh, inch and a half. It's a, it's a muffler, like exhaust pipe. A guy on the forum that I'm on with pellet stoves suggested this for the oak. It's made out of steel. And basically what I'm going to do is uh, hose clamp it onto that steel pipe that I 
made on my own. I didn't want to run the flex pipe through the, the wall. I wanted something rigid. And uh, we're going to run basically the flex pipe down to the inlet that I already have hooked up to the stove and that's just hose clamped on there so it was a like perfect fit um, I'm gonna have to take another little piece of this pipe and some hose clamps to get it connected there uh, so that should work out real good this stove you can either run with the oak or without but I figured I'd run with it since it wasn't too hard to do um, I drilled that hole in that thimble um, I'll show you guys how I did that quick too so to drill out the hole through the metal for the oak, basically I made uh, a little wooden template. Um, I just drilled an inch and a half hole in, in a piece of plywood and I clamped this onto the sheet metal and I had this on the other side clamped on the sheet metal so they, they went together. That was the bottom Then I had the, the uh, thimble metal and then I put this on top and lined it up and then I took a hole saw and just drilled through um, this is a little bit bigger and uh, I did that with both pieces so these lock right in the corner and uh, as you can see it's nice and straight and even they do sell a kit like that but I don't know where you get it so uh, at this point I'm going to end this video if you have any questions or comments feel free to comment and uh, you know I didn't see anything on YouTube people doing this hookup and um, you know it's it's kind of hard to film at all so hopefully you can appreciate it and I'll tell you what the project's not that hard um, a lot of people don't do the J channel on the vinyl siding they'll just attach the metal on top which is fine uh, I guess it just doesn't look as nice or as professional so you can just screw this right on top of your vinyl siding if you have that um, if you have brick, that's the way you do it. You just break a hole through and attach it with like concrete anchors. So I'm going to let this dry for 24 hours and uh, I'll probably let you know how the stove is burning and show you it all, put that back together. So uh, I'm double wide six. I got a bunch of repair videos. I hope you enjoyed this and uh, thanks for watching. See ya.